Hey guys, my name is Carissa. Welcome to my channel if you're new here. So I love horror movies. If you're watching this video, then I assume that you love horror movies as well. So basically, this is going to be a list talking about every single movie coming out in the cinema in 2023. Because let's face it, with all the streaming services available, Shudder, Amazon, Disney, Netflix, there's so many movies coming out across so many services that it would be really hard for me to cover them all. So this is just the movies coming out in the cinema. So I have to be honest, I don't really think that this was a strong year for horror. I mean, the only movie I really loved was Barbarian. The other movies like Smile, I felt that they really fell flat. But maybe you disagree. If you do, let me know down below. What was your favourite horror movie of this year? So anyway, without further ado, firstly, let's get on to honourable mentions. So these are movies that aren't actually horror movies, so they're not going on my list. But they're movies with horror elements in them. So firstly, 65 is a dinosaur movie starring Adam Driver. Basically, there is this prehistoric planet filled with dinosaurs and then Adam Driver crashes his ship on this planet and he has all these futuristic weapons and he has to fight the dinosaurs. And if you've ever wanted to see a movie about Adam Driver versus dinosaurs, you are in luck because that's what we're going to get. I think Adam Driver is a great actor especially in that movie Marriage Story. It's an amazing movie if you haven't seen it. So yeah, he's definitely not just the Star Wars guy. And I really am excited to be getting a movie about dinosaurs that genuinely looks scary because we haven't really had any of those except the obvious Jurassic Park franchise. And even then, I felt like with Jurassic World, the dinosaurs weren't portrayed as the villains as scary anymore. They were more sympathetic. And the franchise really started to lose its teeth. I know, bad joke. <laughs> anyway, so we have another creature feature, Cocaine Bear, which is basically another type of movie that I love. I love the creature feature movies. They are my guilty pleasure movies, especially movies about sharks. So... This is about a huge bear that eats a lot of drugs and goes on a crazy killing rampage and apparently it's actually based on a true story. A true story. Who knows with Hollywood these days. There may have been a bear sitting next to a pile of drugs and that would have been how it's based on a true story. Who knows. Anyway, we also have... An actual shark movie, the sequel to The Meg. So if you haven't seen The Meg, it stars Jason Statham, who was sort of like Ryan Reynolds in that every single role that he plays, he's basically playing himself. But he's an actor that I really like, so I have no problem with that. And I think it's hilarious how in The Meg he actually punches a shark. It's so ridiculous and cheesy, but I love it because here in Australia, that actually happened with a professional surfer. I think his name was Mick Fanning. He actually punched a shark and it was a huge thing here in Australia. Anyway, so I like I said, I love shark movies like Deep Blue Sea is another guilty pleasure movie. And the Meg is basically the biggest shark that has ever been in a shark movie. It is ginormous. And yeah, the first movie sort of toned itself down. I think it was a PG rating, but this one is going to be more in the R territory, I think. I'm not too sure, but I think they are going to be going more horror with this one. And... I think it's going to be following the books. So there, this is based on a series of books that I want to read soon. So anyway, I'm very excited for that movie. And the last honourable mention is the remake of The Haunted Mansion. So obviously The Haunted Mansion 
is a ride at Disney World, which I really want to go on sometime because it's like my life stream to go to Disney World. So anyway, they made the movie or Haunted Mansion and they've done that before. Obviously Pirates of the Caribbean and there's other lesser known movies that were also based on rides that were really good. So this one starred, the original starred Eddie Murphy, who I absolutely adore as an actor, but even he wasn't enough to carry this movie, which is a pity because where it was filmed was beautiful. It had so much atmosphere in the Louisiana swamp, I think it was, and it could have been an amazing movie, but unfortunately it was just let down by a bad script. So... With the remake, I think it's got Danny DeVito from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia and like a million movies from my childhood that I love. So he is automatically getting me excited for the movie. But anyway, without further ado, let's get to the actual list. First up on the list, we have Megan. Megan, however you say that. So this is in no particular order. This isn't an order of excitement levels. I'm pretty excited for a lot of them. But I am exceptionally excited for Megan because I love movies about dolls. You know, Dead Silence, obviously Chucky, Annabelle. But anyway, doll movies are one of my guilty pleasure movies. So I am excited about this. So it's going more in the direction of artificial intelligence rather than actual supernatural horror. Just like in the Chucky franchise, it was originally in the 90s about, you know, supernatural stuff. And I feel like that was a lot more of a fear back then. But now the fear in society has moved to technology because we are afraid of the power that technology has over our lives. And we should be. I've just started watching Black Mirror. So I'm a little in the paranoid state of mind right now. But yeah, technology is scary, let's be honest. So we have a movie about the artificial intelligence going bad. It's been done so many times, but I think it's really interesting. So yeah, Megan, I'm excited for it. The trailer looks good. And that is coming out, I think, in around two weeks. So it is a January horror movie and a lot of people... Know that January is usually full of stinkers, but this wasn't intended to be a January horror movie. It got moved, so there's that. So next on the list, we have Salem's Lot, which is a Stephen King novella adaptation. So a lot of Stephen King adaptations are very hit and very miss. You either love them or you hate them. There's not really much of an in-between. I really enjoyed The Secret Window with Johnny Depp, the Pennywise movies, um, it movies, I should say, The Shining. There's been so many good Stephen King adaptations. There's one that isn't really talked about. I think it's called Red. I'll put a picture up. I forget the name, but it was really good. So anyway, some of them, like Firestarter, which I think came out earlier this year, are also really bad. But this one looks like it's going to be good. I Well, I can't really say that for sure. All I know is I really enjoyed the story. What I've read of it. So who knows if the movie will actually be good. I know that there's, I think, a mini series and maybe a movie as well. Correct me if I'm wrong. So I want to watch those before the reboot comes out. But yeah. I don't know what it's going to be like, but I know it's set in Maine. It's starring a writer. And for anyone who knows about Stephen King, those are classic Stephen King tropes. And I can't say I'm a huge fan of the man himself, but I know how to separate the art from the artist. So I am definitely excited for this movie. So the next one is Insidious Chapter 5, starring Patrick Wilson. He's returning so I've seen the first three Insidious movies. I still need to see number four. But I've enjoyed them. Except for one huge flaw, the sound design on the movies. Oh my gosh, the sound design is horrible. 
it does that thing where suddenly there'll be a loud noise, which let's be honest, 90% of horror movies do that. But with Insidious, the sound goes up so much that I find myself having to watch the movie with my remote and constantly turning it up and down. And it takes you out of the movie instead of scaring you. But apart from that, the movie is really good. I like Patrick Wilson. Obviously, he's from the Conjuring franchise, which is one of my all-time favorite franchises. And we'll talk a bit about that later. But yeah, he's back. uh, I think it's basically about his son going to college. And he's going to be, Patrick Wilson is going to be directing number five. So I'm definitely excited for that. So the next one is A Haunting in Venice. So this is a sequel to Death on the Nile and Murder on the Orient Express. So another murder mystery, but this time it has a supernatural twist. Well, I'm not too sure about that. It could be like the Scooby-Doo movies where there's a villain who's pretending to be a ghost and then he turns out to be a human. But either way, I'm going to put it on the list. So it stars... Tina Fey, Amy Dornan, and Ricardo Scamasio. I know I'm probably butchering his name, but he's the villain from John Wick Chapter 2, and I adore him. I love his accent. I could listen to him talk all day. Anyway, so he's going to be in this movie, which makes sense because it's set in Venice, and I think that is the perfect location for a horror movie. I have been lucky enough to get to go to Venice myself and there's something so mysterious and haunting almost about the place. Like, I can't really describe it. It's just this creepy but beautiful like vibe ambience. And I really could see a horror movie being set there. So with good actors, a good location, a good story, I'm excited for this movie. We also have A Knock at the Cabin by M. Night Shyamalan. I hope I'm saying that right. (laughs) So I'm a huge fan of Shyamalan. When he's good with Signs, for example, The Sixth Sense, but then we also have movies like The Happening and Old. Old came out this year, I think. That was sort of in the middle for me. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. But his films are very divisive by nature and there's obviously always a huge twist in the movie. So Knock at the Cabin, it's going to have Ronald Weasley as the villain. I don't know if I can take him seriously as the villain, but it looks interesting. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to reserve judgment and go in hopeful. We'll see what happens. So the next one is Scream 6. So I know this is a very unpopular opinion. But I was not a fan of Scream 5. I love the other four Scream movies. And it was disappointing learning that apparently Jill Roberts, one of my favourite ghost faces, was originally going to be back for Scream 5. But that didn't happen. Instead, we got all these new characters that I didn't enjoy. I felt like they killed off Dewey too quickly. Well, it wasn't so much quickly as it was the way they did it. It just felt a little disrespectful and also hugely disrespectful as to their fan base when it's revealed that basically the two killers, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, their whole motive for killing is that they were toxic fans who didn't like social commentary in their movies and you know it's a huge middle finger to their audience I felt that if you complain about anything these days, you're seen as this toxic, horrible person. Um, It's like, I feel like it's just an easy way for them to silence people, these directors and actors, where if they make a movie that isn't great and you complain about it and you have a genuine complaint, they just put this invisible shield up of you're a toxic fan and that whole movie just being centred on that and saying that these toxic fans went to the extent of going on a killing rampage because of the stab movies, it just felt like a huge just middle finger to your fan base, to some of your most passionate, loyal fans. So, yeah, like I said, I think that's a very unpopular opinion, but I'm just going to be honest with you guys. 
Yeah, so I think number one and Scream 4 were my favourites. And it's strange to have the fourth entry of a franchise be one of the best. And that just shows how much potential the Scream franchise has. Even the TV series, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. Well, the first two seasons, definitely not season three, which was really bad. It was jammed full of social commentary, which I'm not saying that's always a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes it can be a good thing, but in this case, it wasn't good. And it felt like the characters had no actual personality except for what they were talking about in terms of politics. It's like... The first two seasons had really well-rounded characters that people really cared about and were invested in. And you need to be invested in the characters so that if they die, it hits you really hard. So I highly recommend the show. Unfortunately, there's nowhere to actually stream it these days, I don't think. Well, not in Australia anyway. So look, when it comes to Scream 6, I'm going to try to be positive, not negative, and go in with hope that this could be a turning point in the franchise for me. Even though I don't like a lot of the new characters, the sisters are the ones that I found the least annoying, and obviously they're going to star in the new movies, so yeah, we'll see what happens. And I like the fact that it's set in New York City, it feels like a breath of fresh air in the franchise because obviously apart from Scream 3 being in Hollywood they've always been in the small town setting where it's so different the dynamics of crime because if you are attacked by Ghostface in a small town you're the biggest news in town but in New York City where there's so much crime the police aren't going to really prioritize you so you're sort of left on your own so yeah, I'm excited for Scream 6. It's definitely still going to be one of my most anticipated horror movies of the year. So we have The Nun 2. So The Conjuring franchise is definitely one of my most highly, highly loved franchises. Not just in horror, but all around. When it is good, it is so, so good. The Conjuring 1, The Conjuring 2, Annabelle Creation... But the first Annabelle movie and the third Annabelle, Annabelle Comes Home, really did not hit the mark. And it, it's really disappointing because Annabelle Comes Home, if you haven't seen it, it's basically about Annabelle or the spirit attached to her. Waking up all the dolls in the Warrens, not the dolls, the, the haunted objects in the Warrens Museum, Museum of Cursed Objects. So... All this crazy stuff happens and they don't really delve into the stories behind the objects and it could have been this amazing opportunity to have like this multiverse of the conjuring multiverse, you know, like the Marvel Cinematic Universe and it just had so much potential and it just failed big time. But anyway, we still have three really good movies. I didn't like The Nun 1 or The Curse of La Llorona. And I felt like The Nun had so much potential. It had good actors. It had an amazing setting. The castle they filmed at was so atmospheric and beautiful. I like like the Romanian setting. I found it really beautiful. Um, I've always wanted to go to Romania. Maybe that's why. <laughs> so it had potential. It had a really interesting villain. I forget the villain's name. Is it Velak? Anyway, Velak was one of the scariest villains in the Conjuring franchise. But in its own movie, it just failed to deliver for some reason. And I, yeah, I put that up to bad directing and a bad script. So when we heard about The Nun 2, I thought maybe it could be like Annabelle 2 where it's actually better than the first movie. But then they said that Michael Chavez was directing. So look... I don't want to insult the guy, but I have to be honest. He is not a good director. He was given La Llorona. He was giving The Conjuring 3, which The Conjuring 3 was probably the biggest disappointment to me because 
it actually starred the main two leads and even they couldn't save the movie. Um, yeah, he's never really had a big movie or any movie that he's directed before La Llorona. He's only directed a bunch of music videos and then suddenly he got hands of this giant movie. And I think maybe he wasn't ready for that. So, yeah, I don't really have a lot of hope when it comes to The Nun 2, but hopefully it surprises me. So there's a movie that I haven't really heard a lot about until I went to research for this video. It's called The Pope's Exorcist and it stars Russell Crowe. So he plays this real life figure, who knows how much is actually true, about this exorcist that worked for the Vatican. So he, this man, Gabriel Amorif, I think I'm saying that right, <laughs> he was the chief exorcist for the Vatican and is said to have actually performed over a hundred thousand exorcisms and as a Christian, as a religious person who takes his stuff seriously, it adds to the terror when you actually sort of are a religious person and you watch these movies, but it's also really comforting because often they have a message of faith over fear. But at the same time, if you don't have that sort of belief, you know, that's okay. You can still just watch this as an entertaining movie. So I don't really know a lot about it. There hasn't been any trailers yet, so I can't really say what I think about it. But I think the concept sounds exciting. So the last one is Evil Dead Rise. So I have to admit I have not seen any of the Evil Dead movies. I know there was one that came out in, I think, 2013 and a few in the 80s. So I'll have to watch them one day. Let me know if you think they're any good, if you've seen them. I just, I think they're about zombies and I can't say I'm a huge fan of zombie movies because I never really find them scary, to be honest. Anyway, so apparently this is about two sisters living in LA and they read this ancient book which sort of brings all these demons to life. Haven't they learned from Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets? Do not read books that have supernatural powers. <laughs> Bad things happen. Anyway, so look, those are the movies coming out in cinemas. Let me know down below what one you're most excited about. And if you could give this video a like, comment, subscribe, you know the drill by now, guys. It really helps my videos in the algorithm. Thank you.